guys. So this is problem number ten, uh, one from chapter 10 on, um, hang on, instantaneous power. So in this problem, we are, we have a device, some unknown device, and at the terminals, we have positive current going into the positive terminal of this unknown device. And we go from positive to negative. So what we're trying to find is we're trying to find real average power, and we're also trying to find um, the reactive component of the power. So there's two components in power. There's the real component, and then the reactive component, which is a uh, um, which is the energy that's stored in the magnetic field of the device. So, um, so there are, I'm limited in board space, but we are given voltage in uh, four different theoretical voltages and currents. And in some of the prob problems, in section A, they're both in cosines. In section B, in, um, in section B they're both in cosines. In section C, they're in sine, in cosine and then sine. And then in section uh, D, they are in sine and then cosine. And the trick to this problem is, is that you need um, two things. You need to know what the formula is. So the formula for a power, the real part is P is equal to um, the magnitude of the voltage times the magnitude of the current over 2 times cosine of theta v minus theta i. And then the reactive component is going to be R. Oops, Q is the, what we use. So Q is equal to magnitude of the voltage, um, magnitude of the current um, over 2 times the uh, cosine, excuse me, smeared it. And so let's try this again. So Q Q is equal to the magnitude, which is actually the amplitude since we have um, a sinusoid, the amplitude of the voltage sinusoid over 2 times cosine of um, theta v minus theta i. So what is theta v and theta i? The key to this problem is converting everything in terms of cosines for the p and the q to be correct. So make sure you do that and remember what is sine and cosine. Well, cosine and sine are basically the same function. Cosine starts at the maximum of the sinusoid. So cosine starts there. And sine starts at the mid at the uh, midline. So here is sine. So sine starts at the midline. And oh, that's a terrible sine wave. So that is sine. And this here is two pi. This here is pi. So um, sorry. This is pi when sine hits the, the midline again. So sine hits the midline halfway there and then it does and it hits pi over there. So then this right here is pi over two, right here at the maximum, pi over two. Um, so that means that cosine and sine are really the same. If you were to move this back by pi over two, then you would have cosine, right? I could just cut and paste, move it back, then I would have they would be superimposed, and I would have cosine. So therefore, the relationship between sine and cosine is sine is basically, um, well, cosine, I should say, because we have things here in terms of cosine. So cosine is, wow, I'm never coming to this library again. Nothing works. This is horrible. Sorry, you guys. Um, so cosine is basically sine 
if you minus 90 degrees, right? Because pi over 2 is 90 degrees. So if you, so that's the relationship. So therefore, because um, in one case we have it in terms of sine, if we want to go from sine to cosine, well, we're going to add 90 to both sides. So to go from sine to cosine, then, um, then cosine is going to be, let me see, cosine is sine minus 90 degrees. Right, so... Um, yeah, actually, that is the only direction we're going. We don't need to go from um, sine to cosine. Um, so that's the relationship between sine and cosine. So everywhere that we have a sine function, we need to subtract 90 degrees from that theta and to turn it into a cosine. All right, so pause the video. Try it. I'm extremely against cheating. So if you're using this channel for cheating, do me a favor and just, you know, Get out of here. Nobody likes a cheater, so don't cheat. I'm totally against it. But do use it to learn, but you won't learn unless you try first, so please try first. Pause the video. Try it. Okay, so now that we have all the information and the anti-cheating rant, let's do it. So basically, let's take a look at what these are, because they're the same thing. Um, the reactive component is basically an expression about the magnetic field, the energy that's held in the magnetic field. Um, and the, the P, the reactive or the real component, is the, actually the stuff that does the work in our devices. So what is this VMIM? What does that say? Well, P is equal to VI. We know that. Um, we've known that for several months now. And so what this is saying is, well, now I don't have direct current anymore. I have something that oscillates, right? Something going up. So what's my power now? So if I take a look at all these values, if I can add all of them together, and then so, so now we don't have something that is a constant. We can't just say, okay, V is 20 volts. We have something that goes up here to a maximum amplitude to a minimum amplitude. And from the wall outlet, it's actually really about 170 degrees, that uh, 170 volts that it uh, jumps up to, and then it'll go down to negative 170 degrees, not degrees, but negative 170 volts. So to since our voltage is now not as simple, we take the amplitude, so which is the maximum, um, the maximum value of V, and then we take the maximum value of the current, and then we divide by two, and that gives us average power, and that's what that means. So this is the average power, and then since we have a sinusoid, we're going to take the cosine of the voltage angle um, minus the current angle of the current angle. So let's identify all of the components of part A. So for part A. For part A, we have the, the, nothing works today. For part A, we have the amplitude for the voltage is 100. The amplitude of the current is 10. And the... Um, so they're both cosines, right? So you have voltage is 100, cosine omega t plus 50 volts. You have current is 10 cosine of omega t plus 15 amps. So then, so then we don't really need to do any form of conversion. Theta v is um, 50. Theta i is 15. So I'm going to write these out for you. is horrible. <sighs> what a bummer. Okay, so then the real portion is P is equal to 100 times 10 over 2. That's an average number, right? Cosine of theta V is 50 minus 15. So, when you do that, you should come up with
you should come up with for part A. P is 409.6 watts. And the passive sign convention tells us when positive current enters the negative, um, the positive, positive current going into the positive terminal of a device, positive, when positive current enters the positive terminal of a device, positive power means the device is absorbing. That's just the passive sign convention. So that's absorbing. And so the VARs, I'm going to let you go ahead and calculate that. You know, Q is, um, so Q is 10, 100 times 10 over 2 cosine, 50, oh, yeah, that's right, no sine, excuse me, this should be sine, because we're talking about a reactive component, we're talking about the imaginary parts of it. Remember that cosine and sine are just basically coordinates in the rectangular. So cosine, and so this is cosine, and this is sine, right? Just going back to basics with the, um, our triangle. So sine is the imaginary component, and, um, it rep and so as far as how that translates into the world of electrical energy, it's a magnet, the energy that's stored in the magnetic field. So, and that is a, um, it actually really has the same units as power, as the watts does, but it, it's different. So it's um, called volt amps, um, volt amps reactive bars to distinguish between what's energy held in the magnetic field um, versus real energy. So, so theta V is 50 minus 15. And that is going to be, um, when you calculate that, you should come up with 286.8 bars. And again, we have positive current going into the positive terminal of the device. So positive bars by the passive sign convention is absorbing. So this is absorbing. Um, okay. Let us continue. So then part B. So for part B, we have, for part B we have um, the amplitude. So B. So how should I best do this? So I'm going to put the general equation here. V sub m, um, P is equal to the amplitude of the voltage, amplitude of the current, over 2 cosine of theta V minus theta I. Q is amplitude of voltage, amplitude of current, over 2 times sine of theta V minus theta I. Okay, so for part B, for part B we have Amplitude is 40, so V sub M is 40. Amplitude of the current, v, v sub I, oops, I sub M. So amplitude of the current is I sub M is 20. Theta V, they're both in cosines, so theta V is negative 15. Theta I is positive 16. So when you put that into the power and the um, other component, you should end up with, so for part B, you should end up with, um, I'm not going to write it because um, I'm just going to tell you guys, you should end up with 103.5 watts. Since it's positive, it means the device is absorbing power. For part B, when you um, put all those values in for the Q, you should end up with negative 386.4 VARs. And since it's negative, this means the device is delivering VARs to the system. 
So that's part B. Part C, for part C, um, you have a, the voltage, the magnitude of the voltage is 400, so Vm is 400, um, Im is 10, and here's the trick though. I is 10 sine omega t plus 240 degrees amps. So that means we have to convert it into um, we have to convert it into cosine in order for the key and the V to work. So then sine is going to be so we have sine 10 sine of omega t plus 240, right? So we know sine is exactly cosine, but shifted by 90. So this is really sine cosine omega t plus 240 minus 90. So that means your theta i is going to be, um, that's going to be 240 minus 90, which is 150. So when you plug everything in, you should come up with p, the real part. Um, so power for um, that is going to be negative 1,000, which means the device is delivering power. And um, the bars is negative 1732.1 bars. And so it is, um, it is uh, absorbing power. Okay. Now, part D. Part D, we are given voltage in terms of sine. So we're going to do the same thing. So voltage is 200 sine of omega t plus 250, right? We have to convert to cosine, so that's going to be 200 cosine of omega t plus 250 minus 90. So that means our theta v is going to be um, 250 minus 90, which is 160. So your Vm, V magnitude is 200, I magnitude, the magnitude of the current is 5, and theta V is 160, and theta I is 60. When you put that into the real and the reactive formulas, you should come up with power is a negative 250 watts. So that means it's delivering, the device is delivering power. Um, Q is uh, net is positive 433.0 VARs, which is means the device is absorbing power. So that is um, 10.1. Remember, please share the video if you got help. And please like the Facebook if you haven't already. And um, thanks. Bye.